Well, we're almost done with the squirrel problem. Last and certainly least, the thing we're gonna do is closing entries. Closing entries are very easy because you just memorize it. All we're trying to do is when we think about our financial statements, I always just said, you take your net income and that goes to retained earnings. We just did a big arrow and made that work. Well, we need our general ledger to actually represent retained earnings of 1423. So we've got to move the income over there. But we really don't have an account called income. We've got a whole bunch of little accounts with revenues and expenses. So we have to close all those revenues and expenses to income, and then we can move the income to retained earnings. And that's all we're doing in closing. So they're really simple. While I said you always increase revenues and expenses, I think I always said almost, this is the one time where I'm trying to zero out my revenues, zero out my expenses. So you do whatever you have to do to take the account balance to zero. If I look at my revenues here, I've got revenues of 8150 with a credit balance. So to make that zero, I'm going to have to debit the revenues for that 8150. So now the balance in there is zero. And the account that I'm going to take that to is a really temporary account called income summary, where I'm going to keep track of revenues and expenses. So my end balance in there is going to be my net income. So close your revenues. Next, I have to close my expenses. So to close the expenses, that's got a debit balance. So I've got to credit it. My cost of goods sold, and it has to be a credit. That has to be the $100. These are all expenses up through interest expense. So I'm gonna to try to just kind of copy this down and see if I can get, oh, perfect first time. Each one of my expenses has to get closed. But you notice after that interest payable, I've got another expense. I've got supplies expense for 158. And then I've got rent expense. And I could type these in, but my typing isn't very good. But then this is a payable, so I don't care about that either. You might want to go back to your financial statement. You know, you can go back here and count and make sure you've got all of them in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I probably have all of them. Then if you hit Alt Equal, you can sum a column. The total amount I've got there is 60, 67.27. And so that goes to my income summary. And you can go back and double check. Yep, that's my total expenses. That's my total revenue. Life should be good. So if you look at your income summary, I've got 8150 minus 6727 is the balance in there. I had 8150 minus that. So 1423 is what I've got now in income summary. So close your revenues close your expenses, and then you close your income summary. So to get rid of income, I need to debit it. And that's what goes to retained earnings. I'm going to take that minus that. Gives me that 1423. And that's how that gets to retained earnings. It should make sense because again, this means the credit means it will increase our retained earnings. And since we made some profits, that's how we increase retained earnings. So that should seem right. All my revenues are zeroed out. And so any revenues that I start in February will just be for February. All my expenses have zeroed out. So I'll match my revenues to my expenses and my retained earnings beginning balance will be what I made in January. And so the next period I do the same thing um, and my retained earnings will keep getting bigger. Now we're done with Pharrell. So I guess you're happy.